I'll be honored to come here to meet you and uh, deliver my talk in front of a you know, big audience. And I also you know, thank to the actual Mark to invite me to the, his annual class and uh, to get some opportunity to, you know, to discuss lots of you know, things around uh, this world, including you know, the America and actually you know, the East Asia and other you know, places, Africa, something like that. So today, actually, I'm a I gonna actually narrow down you know this subject into the very you know a specific area of the images, and uh, this I gonna actually does, uh, the present some kind of introduction to you know the first coming my book about the Peony, the Dutch you know the golden golden age painter, that uh, the the painting how actually such kind of painting or related to some philosophical invention of the ego something like that that is my main subject will be in my uh, forthcoming book. Um, so this might, this might be a kind of introduction for them. So just I need actually your opinion when I talk and uh, your discussion on that it might be some very insightful for me as well. So the um, thing is that actually I, I, this might be a kind of theoretical stuff, but I think in the theory uh, I just need my major is the theory, the cultural theory and some uh, philosophy, but the, what is philosophy? Nobody can easily you know, answer to that, this question you know, as to what is actually philosophy is or what is actually um, the theory. Um, but the thing is that my, I, my idea on the theory is very simple. It's kind of, you know, architecture, you know? Architecture is a theory, you know? That means a theory means, you know, to see something to see something from above, not in a from the, the from a bottom. Is from above you can see that landscape. There is a theory. That means theory means to see or seeing something like that. Definitely related to eye. That means in Greek, theo means see. That's why. So theory as such, I think the definition of theory as such indicates some kind of essence of theoretical stuff, essence of theoretical thought. For instance, you know, Descartes, normally regarded as actually the founder of the modern philosophy, he is a kind of a you know, philosopher who invented, uh, these days, not just philosopher said, is the invented one, you know, ego, perfect ego, you know, is objective ego, you know, is independent, independent from the kind of, you know, the subjective, subjective conception. So he uh, discovered such a kind of, you know, foundation for the perfect ego. What was that? Is a doubt, you know? Normally say, I think, therefore I am. That means, what kind of thinking he did? The perfect ego can do in terms of the thinking. There is a doubt. I doubt, therefore I am. That is actually the, I think, very, you know, fantastic result done by, the, actually, Descartes, you know? There is actually objectivity. What is a critical? That means doubt, doubt means, like doubting means kind of, you know, critical thinking. You know, transform this, you know, the dimension into the actually the critical one. So, I doubt means I criticize something. How can we doubt something? How can we doubt? Very simple. We can make some distance. Distance, you know, from you and object very easily to make such one. So that's why just the Kant, Immanuel Kant, actually, you know, the, the German philosopher, who I think who normally is known as a kind of philosopher who um, they coined up such kind of term, critique, critique, something like that, you know? Uh, whatever, you know, what he argued anyway, just that the, we sort of focused on the, this critique, something. Why is that? It's a criticizing means distanciation, you know? That is actually what Kant, you know, the, the, the discoverer, in terms of the philosophy. What is that? He can, you know, produce such kind of, you know, the, 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 the condition for knowledge. How we actually the, produce such kind of condition? The human being, how the subjectivity can, you know, produce such kind of knowledge? How? That it depends on space and time. That is actually, you know, the very core idea in Kantian philosophy. So, I'm not gonna talk about, you know, the, the Kant, you know, this class, what I want to focus on is actually Descartes' invention of such, you know, um, the doubting ego, something like that. 
That might be called what? Objective ego. Objective subject. Subject. A little bit you know, the weird and ridiculous. You know? Objective <laughs> subject. Anyway, subject but objective. Something like that. That is, I think, you know, the pa paradox of the modernity. Paradox of all, you know, I think, you know, include the theory, including the architecture. That means, so, theory is kind of architecture. Why? Descartes, Descartes himself, you know, talk about that. In the first philosophy, meditation on first philosophy, he talk about that. Very important text. You know, he, in, in the text, he announced, I think, therefore I am. And before, you know, the, his announcement, he actually uh, uh, explained how we can reach the end, such kind of, can be reach the such a kind of doubtness or the state of doubting. He said, demolished all city. You know, he said like this. I can't you know, remember the exact words anyway, just he talked about like this. If you imagine you are architect, ar architect and rebuild whole city, how can how can uh, how can he you know do for the rebuilding the whole city, destroying everything? Do you understand? That is actually the um, the what actually Descartes said in the actual meditation. That means meditation means destroying everything. What destroying preconception, destroying values, destroying the given habit, something like that. After that, we finally reach that where doubt doubting subject, you know without any preconception, without any, you know, the interruption by the values, value system, we finally found out the perfect ego. That, that, that is actually Descartes, you know, the methodology to actually the, uh, make the knowledge, the objective knowledge, or the kind of, you know, judgment um, the, the, by that we can, you know, the which one is right, which one is wrong. So, um, whatever like, Descartes is right or not, what I want to say is that very simple. Where you know the, the what kind of you know the imagination you know Descartes put forward in terms of philosophy there. He said, just imagine architect, you know, try to rebuild the whole whole city. Very important thing, architectonic architectonic imagination there. That means philosophy. In other words, actually, the theory probably, you know, based on such kind of imagination. What kind of imagination? Architectonic imagination. We are rebuilding whole, you know, the way of think. You know, whole, you know, the, the thought. Whole, you know, structure of, you know, the thinking. Something like that. That is actually architectonic imagination. That is the very, you know, modernist thought. You can see this kind of, you know, the imagination in every theorist. For instance, Marx, as you know, the Karl Marx as well. He just divided the whole world into the you know, two parts, the base and superstructure. Definitely that one is architectonic imagination. You know, Rancière as well, Deleuze as well. Of course, yes, Deleuze, Deleuze's focus, emphasis is different from the, such a you know, structuralism or structural, you know, the structuralist. But anyway, he presupposed that kind of structure. But just that he put the actual emphasis on different, you know, dimension of structure. Is a desire, or some kind of, you know, um, the, the, the immanence, will, immanence. This is very important, you know, uh, the concept in delusion philosophy. But actually very simple. What is immanence? It's a life. That is what Deleuze said in terms of immanent. immanent. The, uh, the pure immanence, the last, you know, the stuff. Um, the, it posthumously published in the actually Deleuze death after Deleuze death. So, in that, in a very short and uh, condensed text, Deleuze argued that immanence is life. What is life? Is that kind of you know, the natural, scientific, genetic life? No, it's not kind of life. In that sense, normally philosophy said such a kind of you know genetic life or you know the biological life called in philosophical sense what? Bio, bios, bio. That means biological life. It's not actually you know the Paul the philosophy. Philosophy you know 
are not actually interested in this kind of, you know, the biological life. It belongs to what? It's natural scientist, not, you know, the human scientist, something like that. You know, not, not belongs to vision shaft in the, actually, the German, you know, term. It's not kind of, you know, humanity things. So what humanities should actually deal with? They're simply life. It's not kind of biological, blah, blah. The one is life based on what, as Hegel said, it's, you know, the, um, the German, another German philosopher, you know, the big guy, anyway, the father of philosophy, something like that, <laughs> one of their first philosophers, but actually, um, the, as a result, he turned to be actually the final, you know, and the, and the, the actual last, you know, philosopher these days. Um, he actually talked about that. What is human beings? Or what kind of being is very simple, discursive, discursive, based on what thought or thinking. That is actually, you know, the um, what actually what actually blues, you know, talk about in terms of life. What is that image of thought? That is a blues term. Image of thought. What is life? The image of thought. What is immanence? The image of thought. What is that? You know? <laughs> what the heck is that? What, what is the image of thought? Thought is image, yeah? Thought is image. But why actually he said image of thought? That means thought, I think, consists of the th images. That means for the loose, image is a life. The very interesting, you know, argument finally come out. It's a little bit similar to the actually the Benjamin. Yeah, I think you uh, discussed that one. Benjamin regarded the world as kind of built. That means the, the picture or painting or something like that. You know, for Benjamin, um, the world can be uh, interpreted in terms of painting or image. You know, built is a kind of you know the painting or picture. So people understand the world as a kind of picture. In other words, we can say it's image. You know. But in that case, the Benjamin got some theoretical problem in it. What? He actually presupposed what? Division between subject and object. Just the very, the, the German idealism, you know, the, the presupposition. That means the, what is actually the theoretical, you know, division suggested by German idealism. Kant and Hegel, you know, the whole thing is a divide, you know, the human being from the what? The perfect ego. Is God, something like that, you know, or transcendental, you know, knowledge or perception. Um, the actually the, uh, a priori or the prior to the actually our experience, you know, that is actually the position, you know, through which the actual Kant pr can produce critique on the actually such experiences. There is actually German idealism, you know, divided actually to you know the part, the transcendental and empirical dimension. But in Toulouse, that one is converged together. Toulouse is a very strange philosopher. You know, he destroyed everything, you know, like this one. Transcendental empiricist. He defined himself like that. You're crazy. You know, objective subject or something like that. You know? Transcendental empiricism. Imperial empiricism cannot, you know, that in it's not compatible with the you know, transcendentalism. That is actual history of philosophy. It's actually, I think you know, that one is you know, the stable, you know, the, the hypothesis. Cannot be shared with the empiricism, with the, you know, that, that kind of you know, the transcendentalism, something like that. But in the Russian philosophy, that is gathered together and integrated in terms of transcendental empiricism. Why is that? You know? That is just very simply, you can understand, you, you can very simply understand, you know, this, you know, term, something like that, you know, it's uh, empiric em empirical dimension is connected to, interwoven with what? Transcendental experience, something like that, that means idea for the blues. That means idea is a kind of, you know, image, you know, image intervene what? The way of your thinking. Thinking or the living, something like that, is actually what? Experiential, empirical dimension. That one is always, always already connected to what? The 
image. You know? So that's why just uh, he said the thinking is life or something like that. Image of thinking is life. That means you got just an you know, idea of life inside. Who gave that one? Who? That is a problem. That is actually a problem suggested by philosoph the, the delusion philosophy. Who gave that one? I think a lot of the French philosophers try to you know, explain that one. For instance, Lacan there is a symbolic, you know, social dimension, language, or some kind of, you know, habitual, for instance, actually Benjamin also pointed out, habitual perception. That is a historical thing, you know. But as I told you, the Benjamin's problem is that he actually put some kind of division, you know, um, the subjectivity and the objective. That means uh, he actually presupposed that kind of historical dimension the prior to the actual the, 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 the coming of the actual such a subjectivity. That means uh, the objectivity already there, after that subjectivity is, you know, the molded by such a kind of, you know, um, the, the frame, something like that. That is what Benjamin talk of. Uh, talk about that's why just he, uh, uh, I think the, the transformed or the converted to the Marxism. The problem is to change the world. You know, that is the first thing. After that, we can get right or perfect subjectivity or better subjectivity. There is a very typical, you know, Marxist, you know, um, the idea uh, to change the world. You should change the law. You should change the institution. Blah blah blah. But uh, as you know, the May 68th, you know, the, the, the French, you know, the revolution normally, the May, May revolution revealed that you see, it, it might be impossible to change the you know, institution as, as far as subjectivity would change. That is a turning point, you know, very turning point. It's kind of watershed from which your philosophy came out in the horizon of the human, you know, the being human history, something like that. It, it is very important. There is a video called kind of event, you know? So it's a little bit long introductory <laughs> anyway. So let's just you know, flip over to the actually what I prepared. Okay, so that's why just uh, the, focus, uh, the focus is that very simple, you know, that just the theory is architectonic imagination, and that one, and the Deleuze, you know, said something provides us such a kind of, you know, of thinking. Uh, pre prior to our own, you know, the desire, our own, you know, the identity, something like that. What is that? That is actually, you know, the Deleuze question. Deleuze question. Why is that? And the Deleuze put, put, put emphasis on desire rather than the structure. You know? That means um, we got the search, you know, the body without organ, something like that. Body without organ, that means actually we, body is the, the starting point. What is that? This one is actually the gestalt theory, gestalt theory and some kind of psychological theory. The, the body without organ means death, death drive, something like that. Death drive or libido, that means actually from his theory um, the, based on the Freud or the psychoanality, you know, this position. For instance, it's Lacan, actually very connected to Lacan, you know. So, what you talk about is the death drive give us such a kind of you know energy to propel our own you know subjectivity, our own you know that uh, value system, our own you know the, um, the knowledge about the object. That means there is no such a kind of objective perception in delusion philosophy because it's useless. That means axiomatic thing. It's kind of cutting you know cutting the desire. It's, the desire always flows, but some, you know, the objective, objectivity, objective knowledge cut the kind of, you know, flow. But uh, this is actually a problem. In that, in that sense, how can we actually, you know, how can we um, the apply, you know, this kind of delusion thought into making building? How, how can we actually apply this theory to understand architecture? Architecture is wrong, you know, because that is a cut the flaws of the actually the desire. We are gathered here. We just you know, suppress our desire to go out. We can drink, you know, we can you know enjoy our life, but we should study, blah blah blah. That is symbolic. There is a law, a regulation. But the rules actually try to reject all kind of regulation, you know, in terms of what emancipation of desire. That is the point. Rangsia criticized the rules. 
There is no such a kind of emancipation. There is no such a kind of non-representation or anti-representation. It's impossible. Very simply, um, the, we can you know, see that difference between the Deleuze and Wangse. You know? So the point is very simple. I always talk about the simple, you know, philosophy is very simple. <laughs> of course, philosophy is very simple. One. So that one is actually, Wangse said, the regime. You know? Regime. That is very complicated, you know, the term. I said the regime is, I think, stands for normally political regime. Ang Xian regime or something like that. So that is a political thing. That means for Lang Xian, the image is connected to what? The political. In other words, politics. Lang Xian actually divided politi the, the, the put some distinction between politics and police and the political. The political is something cannot be represented in terms of uh, politics. It's, it's not the Rangsi's own, it's a kind of, you know, the, the Aristotle's, Aristotle, the Greek philosopher. He actually uh, regarded uh, politics as kind of police to control, you know, people, control the such kind of, you know, the demos, you know? That one is actually what actually Aristotle called the poli politics, but he, Rangsi, you know, revived this, you know, concept and rejected this kind of poli politics as a real politics, what he tried to say is that the political is always, already, you know, and resist the politics. That means actually just something like that, Occupy, Wall Street, blah, blah, where the, you can see the Arab, Arab, you know, Spring, or some other, everywhere, you know, riots and blah, blah, something like that, you know, time came out. For instance, why is that? It's um, Fukuyama, you know, the, a decade ago, two decades ago, Fukuyama announced the end of history, but still, you know, going on. What something kind of demonstration, something kind of riot, something kind of protest, always coming out of this end of you know history. So, Wang Xie tried to explain why this kind of thing happened. Politics controlled everything. We got you know representative, the parliamentary you know the system for this politics. We got very strong police, you know. For instance, the Arab also got very strong in the military dictatorship, something like that. But people always resisting that one, without any reason. <laughs> They're just resisting, you know? So that one is, I think, a very um, important thing for the Rangshia. So that's why he tried to theorize what happened to the, our life, something like that. And then he actually totally agreed to the actual Deleuze you know, definition of life. Rangsi as well. But the uh, thing is, Rangsi um, defined um, the aesthetic as kind of political. That is a different thing, you know. That means uh, Rangsi, you know, regarded representation as a kind of, you know, uh, the another side of the anti, the non representation. That means uh, representation always contain or you know, hiding that kind of unrepresentable thing in it. This, I think this imagination, this idea is very perfectly architectonic, you know. <laughs> it's like you think about the architecture, you know. Is regime is what? It's taken kind of structure, might be a regime, you know. Or uh, it's not kind of just architecture as such might be a regime, you know. You can you know, put some kind of institution, or, what I mean actually is structure, put the structure. You just uh, in, get in the, and you cut into actually structure now. You are sit, sit on inside of the structure. You know? But we did something. We are doing something now. That is, might be called the political. That means actual kind of, there might be some interaction between structure and people. That is actually Rangshi's idea. That is the reason why Rangshi called aesthetic as a regime. For Rangshi, aesthetic is uh, connected to image, image of a thought. That means life. Very interesting. So, uh, look, look at this one. Just the, what I want to say is uh, w how this thing can be, this kind of presupposition can be proved. So I'm going to show you all some images. You know, what is this? This one is Peomi. Peomi is, you know, painting. Uh, it's uh, the highest, you know, the achievement. The, 
when he's, he's alive. Uh, so this one is uh, Delaford, the, the view of Delaford. Delaford, you know. It's, it's actually kind of, you know, the small city in the, the Netherlands, that means it's a whole land. And it's, you still, you know, get there, you know, with the, some, you know, the train from Amsterdam. Anyway, so Delaford view, look at that one. Just like uh, what? Poros, you know, just like Poros. We, we don't actually raise the question as to what, why just, you know, he uh, painted, you know, this kind of landscape. Because in those days, the landscape is popular genre. Why? They want to see the world, the bourgeois, subjectivity, bourgeois ego, try to control the whole world. For instance, you know, right side that, you know, you can see the ships. What is that? That is actually a fishing boat. And uh, over there, the fishing boat, and they can, that means actually a stand for kind of, you know, the, 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 the um, industry, the flourishing industry in those days, in the Netherlands. You know, such kind of fishing and some trading, you know, blah, blah. So that's why just that item must be included into this painting. Why? The customers won't see that. How our, you know, the, the, the world is very you know, abundant with this kind of, you know, items. We are, how much we are rich or something like that. That, that is what really they want. Just like a cat photo, you know, of your family, memorizing, your, you know, that um, boundary of your, yourself, boundary of your, your life, something like that, is memorizing something. So that is kind of a memorizing, it's very, you know, the desire is similar to you got the photo today. That is a photo kind of thing. Because they don't have any, you know, the, the, the camera in those days. They don't have any technology. So just de they depended on what this kind of artist technology, you know? Is it, the, for example, Dylan Bruce, you know, um, the Argo like that. It's also painting, also technology. So, um, the point is that he the, painted this picture. And uh, I went to Delaford, you know, last year, just to uh, try to find a point where the, the actual pyramid, pyramid actually, you know, the, the, the painted this view. That one is Delaford. This side is outside. That means that this, this side is actually the, out of the town. It's not actually Delaford. It, this area is not belongs to Delaford. It does not belong to Delaford. That means actually this one, this seashore, is actually seashore. Seashore is a kind of, you know, a place. The traveler right. Traveler right. That means actually like this one, this guy is, you know, outsider. Outsider from Delaford. They are not resident in Delaford. That means this case, where is this case? This case is kind of an outsider's one. That means what? Transcendental objectivity. Do you understand? We don't know who, whoever actually, you know, watching this, you know, scene, but I think that scene might be an ideal case, you know? Ideal, you know, um, the person seeing this, you know, view, Delaford. It's, that means objective, you know, view. There might be, a, I think, you know, um, the credit poll. This one is a very objective scene. So you can buy, you know. This one is a little bit, you know, guarantee, you know, that kind of quality. <laughs> this is a real, you know, delicate or something like that. So this is the way in which um, the Pamir painting um, they produced knowledge of the objectivity or the knowledge of the, you know, the real you know, city, real, you know, world, blah, blah. So, and then, so this one is photo uh, photography thing here. So, this one, this kind of technology, the most advanced in those days, you know. And after that, I'm going to show up. Yeah, the, the, the poem is painting is normally known as kind of, you know, beginning of the modernity or modern gaze, the birth of modern gaze. Normally, they argue that um, the poem is kind of, you know, um, the, the precursor of such a you know, modern painting. That means actually, you know, the, the, the anticipate, you know, the, the emerging of the photography, something like that, you know? But um, 
This one is a uh, Korean paint, painting. The first modern painting in Korean history. What kind of difference between the pyramid and this painting? This self-portrait, this painter there. He studied uh, painting in Japan. It's colonial, colonial age, so they're colonized by the Japanese in imperialism. Korean Peninsula was colonized by the Japanese in imperialism. And the lots of the upper class, aristocrat, the actual son, and normally daughter is prohibited to go there, so <laughs> but some uh, other than the woman will come. Anyway, so um, the, the children, you know, the aristocrat, upper class children, they went to the actual Japan to study this kind of painting. Um, I think you, you might you might actually you know, the, um, the pay attention to the style, the technique. What kind of technique there? That is impressionism. That is the first modern painting in Korean history, and the technique is impressionist. What does that mean? We Korea, we Korean don't have pyramid. Do you understand? <laughs> we don't have any painting like a pyramid. That is, I think that is the first evidence we can, you know, the approved um, the, what Wang Xi argue in terms of a regime, right? The aesthetic is a kind of regime, you know? That means this is quite a different regime, you know? That means modern, modernization or, or development of modern aesthetic it's not linear. That thing is not linear thing, you know? The variable actually, aesthetic is imported to in different contexts that stand for something regime. That's my point, uh, by which we should understand, you know, the, 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 the Rang Xia's theory about the aesthetic. So, this is a very interesting painting for the, I think, you know, the art, art historian because Korean has no, you know, pyramid style, pyramid like painting. Just, that means the, our own, you know, the modern painting begins with this kind of impressionism. That means impressionism was the origin of Korean modern paintings. Not any, you know, the Renaissance, you know, not kind of Renaissance, not kind of the pyramid, you know, objectivism. We don't have that one. You, you understand that one? Impressionism is what? It's subjectivism. You know? <laughs> it's kind of you know, subjective, you know? The, they are the pay attention to the, what, the function of I. Of course, they are arguing this is objective, but actually the thing is that the subjective is kind of mediation through which the, we can reach at that kind of objectivity. So that one is it's very important, you know? The, at the turning point in the history of art. So, look at this one. I'm going to show you a similar one. Another, you know, self portrait. Definitely look at that. It's impressionism, you know? And uh, another one? That one. It uh, reminds us kind of noir, you know? The one is uh, actually the sunset. It's the title is sunset. This one is the first Korean dude. But very interestingly, they, the, the girl, you know, they didn't see the actual their face toward the actual audience. They're just hiding, you know, because it, in those days still we got, you know, the Korean Confucian tradition. That's why they, it's a little bit, you know, very, uh, if, uh, I think the painter, you know, got very brave in the mind. If, you know, draw this one, try to, you know, the, the, uh, persuade the girls, who are they? They are Geisha, Geisha and Kenya. They actually know them, the capital. So, also, you know, they look like what, for instance, look at this one. This one typically, you know, um, the impressionist technique. And uh, again, also this one. This one is the painting done by the first female painter in Korean history. <laughs> All thing is the first one. The first female painter drew this painting. 
And it also, you know, definitely impressionist style. You know, it's kind of Maurizio or something like that. It's a very impressionist kind of thing. So, look at this. Um, Mm, this one is actually not 18th century Korean painting. It looks like a uh, well, Chinese one. Because in, in those days, we don't have any division between the China and the Korea. You know, we got to share the same you know, East Asian you know, culture, same you know, aesthetic. But this one is a little bit different from the, what we, we can see the actual traditional Chinese paintings. Also, you know, technique, definitely Chinese style. But uh, uh, this one seems like what? Reminds us impressionist painting. It's drawn drawn in actually 18th century. It's produced in 18th century. It's very early modern, you know. But after that means actually there are a very huge gap between this painting, 18th century painting, and I show you this painting. Huge gap there. You know? Just uh, I think 50 years, five decades only. The, I think they counting the you know the, the kind counting the gap, the, the time, time gap actually just in a p five decades only. But the, the, through the five decades, things change rapidly like this, you know. This one changing into this one. Whole painting is gone, you know. And you can see this one actually the, uh, the done by the Chebuk. Chebuk is a painter, Korean painter. He is avant-garde. He is born into the lower class and he became a painter, that means that he cannot be actually the, uh, the, the, the getting stable you know, status for, as a painter. He is the first you know, painter, one of the first painters selling, selling his painting for living. Uh, that means a professional painter in, the, in, in Korea. The first kind of you know, person, you know, the precursor for you know, selling his own you know, painting for living. You know? That is very uh, interesting. Anyway. You should, you should see this one, you know, that um, kind of this normally painting is, you know, regarded as kind of Jingyong Sansu, that means actually real landscape painting in Korean terminology. That means this guy painted real what? Landscape. Not any, you know, ideal one. Like, you know, the traditional Chinese, Chinese painting. Normally ch traditional Chinese painting reflecting what? Literary idea. That means normally like, uh, you know, the pre raphaelite normally um, the Chinese painting is kind of, you know, the, 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 the visualization, visualizing such a kind of you know, literary images. That one is actually the, what Chinese painting aims at. But uh, this one is actually normally regarded as kind of real landscape painting. That means this guy tried to imitate nature. You know? So look at this one, that, you know, the, the tree. The tree is, you know, windy, the, 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 the stirring, you know, in the windy you know, atmosphere. He tried to show up what movement of a tree, twigs or something like that. And the, you can see that there is a winter, very cold, you know, freezing night. And two guys is going back to home. And one guy is, you know, the old man and the, the other guy is the boy. And look at this, you know, the very big, you know, huge, you know, on the dogs, the barking, you know. So um, that that the calligraphy, actually, that Chinese character stands for the Pumun, uh, Pumunya Queen. That means actually the the the, the what is that? It's a very cold night, cold winter night, you know, and windy night. The two guys actually going back to the home. That is that that actually title said. So uh, anyway, just uh, you know, the point is that you know the tree through his movement. He tried to describe the movement. That is, I think, you know, kind of, you know, on the, on the um, how can I say, latent, or kind of, you know, the potential, you know, possibility for the modern painting. It's indicating such a kind of, you know, um, the possibility of modern painting. It means 18th century Korean painters very interested in describing nature, describing the movement, that means kind of you know, its own you know, development you know, toward modern painting. But overtly, all thing is gone, and uh, this thing, this you know, new, paint, new style of the painting, imported into where? 
and put it into actually Korean context called modern painting. Do you understand? Why, is this, why these things happen? You know? Some you know, nationalists argue that it's a Japanese imperialism. Blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> aesthetic is not such a thing, you know. Aesthetic is a, aesthetic needs kind of an you know, improvement from the people because that is always related to what practical and pragmatic purpose as a, like an you know, architecture. Architecture got such a pragmatic purpose. It's not kind of, it also an you know, ideal, but uh, ideal is not at the end of actually, you know, the architecture. Architecture needs kind of realization of such an idea into the real world. Painting or aesthetic also, you know, something like that. They got, you know, the utopian impulse, but they should be realizing such kind of utopian impulse into the objectivity, something like that. So this one also, you know, the Turner, Turner's one, the appealing, he turned out try to, you know, the, um, the describe the feeling of the, the train. This one is a train, right thing is a train. It's like the, actually the, what is that? It's a, the title might be, you know, the stamp of that, speed and, you know, um, the train, the, what we experienced in terms of train. So, this one also you know, regarded as kind of, you know, the, the beginning of modern painting, modern painting in the Britain. So that means it, it, this you know, painting tried to describe what? Movement, movement of the train, you know? That means actually this 19th century, you know, early 19th century, that means very close to the 18th century. In those days, all you know, global society you know, got such a kind of desire to describe movement of nature or natural movement. This is what actually Deleuze said, you know? The people first world war, the, the, the aim of the aim of the film, aim of the cinema was to show up movement, image. But after the Second World War, that means in the nineteen sixties, the actually the cinema is turned into showing up the image of thought. Thought image or the actually not a kind of moving image, just you know, the the time image that means time image that means it's a little bit a similar definition. So recent in you know, a contemporary film, contemporary cinema, what contemporary cinema tries to show up is a what? Temporal image. You know, time image rather than the, actually the movement image. But this is very you know modern modern image according to Deleuze. What? Try to showing up movement image rather than the you know, time image. So, as you see this one, this, you know, Trebux one as well, it also, you know, showing up to what? Movement image. Very, you know, uh, similar to the, what at the Western, for instance, in the Turner, you know, tried to show up in his own, you know, his, uh, his painting. But actually, you know, you, you see this one, that one is a totally different, you know, Technique, totally different painting. Nobody you know, said this one the same painting or blah blah. But uh, what? Same idea there. That means idea is same. But technique, aesthetic, aesthetic technique is different. This point. So, the Japanese painting, you know that. This ukiyo-e. Japanese one is actually a little bit different from what Korean painting show up. Korean painting is, you know, totally different, you know, technique. But uh, this Japanese painting, ukiyo-e, ukiyo-e, that means actually the something painting uh, seen above. There's a literal meaning of the ukiyo-e, means actually the, the, the um, seeing the above, you know, seeing the, actually the landscape above. That, is, that means that. So, uh, this picture is a little bit strange. Why? As you know, like this, there is no perspective. That means actually the perspectivism, Renaissance perspective. There is no that. No, no, you know, the, the, the vanishing, vanishing point. Just the, that one is typical Oriental and Chinese painting. 
Chinese technique is just like this one, low you know, perspectivism. But here, also Turner, you know, the, 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 the destroyed, destroyed that in perspective, perspective, you know, the principle descending from the actual Renaissance age. That one is actually an innovative way to the, see the you know, object, to see the world in different, innovative way to the, actually see the world. That is actually the, the, the symbolic, you know, the uh, invention of the modernity. But this one, Japanese one, you can see that. Why is that? They got perspectivism. They got perspective in it. This way. The, the Fuji, Fuji mountain is a you know, vanishing point. What happened to them? What is happening is Japanese, Japanese artists implanted Western technique into their context. You know? What they need is kind of you know the mixture. Try to find out you know the mixture. That is, I think, you know, what Japanese uh, regarded modernity. For Korea, modernity means what? Rupture between tradition and, and the new, the newness, something like that. You know? The old one and the new one. That one is for the Korean people, regarded actually new world, you know, blah, blah. Like the, the Descartes, you know, Descartes, you know, the way to think. But the Japanese is a little bit different. They got their own tradition, they want to keep their own tradition like this one. They draw, they keep drawing, keep producing ukiyo-e, still now, until now, you know, they're producing an ukiyo -e. You can see the ukiyo -e painter in Japan these days. And they actually, you know, the, um, they imported this kind of perspectivism into their own, you know, style. That's why they created this kind of very interesting painting. This one as well. No? This also, you know, the disposed by architectonic imagination. That means actually that one is also you know, got the perspectivism. But you must you must see that the, they draw they draw the actual people according to their own style. It's not ukiyo -e. it's, it's just ukiyo -e style. But the landscape it changed. The landscape following up the Western one. They mean the Western meets. You know, Japanese style. Look at this one as well. This, this you know, the, the description of the people is actually the power of the, you know, ukiyo -e, you know, principle, ukiyo -e regulation. So, okay, this one. So, um, I show what the whole you know, image is on there. Okay, so I'm concluding now. Okay, so, the thing is that, um, what, I, what I want to say is that, uh, what's happening, you know, in, in, these, in these actually images? Um, that means actually, if you got same ideas, if you got the same, you know, desire, according to the, depending on the regime of the aesthetic, there might be some, you know, the related to social economic change or, you know, any, you know, the people's relationship or hierarchical the social status or, you know, democratic social status, depending on such kind of political, you know, on the transformation. All thing is, I think, you know, connected this kind of regime. So, thing is, actually, if your regime is changed, as, a, as Wangxi said, the knowledge also, you know, changed. That means if you want to change the, your you know, knowledge, you should change the regime. Mm, this is not a right, right sentence to you know, the, understand Rangxia, because for Rangxia, nobody can change the regime. Regime is produced by demos, produced by the politica, produced by some kind of people's movement or some kind of thing, thing like that. It's like, you know, the, produced by light or something like that. So, uh, always life is connected, inter intermingled with the, the language and thought, language and desire, blah, blah. So, this kind of regime, I think, you know, um, they produced aesthetic dimension. That means regime is not, uh, regime is not as such, you know, the aesthetic dimension. But if you need, if, I think the regime is necessary to produce that one. That means that is the point 
uh, Rangsia tried to make against the Toulouse. We need representation. If you got such an anti-representative desire, if you got such a kind of you know, anti-representative uh, knowledge on the objectivity, you should get representation system, something like that. That is uh, connected, interactive, interactive, you know, biological interactive, you know, each other. That is what Rangsia tried to say. So, um, and then these you know images showed up how we how you know image works out how your images work you know how very simply that one is works in terms of regime regime is kind of you know architectonic image that means image put uh, realization of the idea that's why just you know the the, the Korean painter, the 18th Korean painter, shared the uh, same thing with the toner, but he produced totally different, you know, the aesthetic representation according to what Chinese tradition, rather than impressionist tradition. But after the 19th century, Korean painter, they actually they is not very far from the actually, you know, the 18th century. Just you know, I think 50, you know, 50 years, something like that, five decades. But uh, some kind of rupture there between the you know the 18th century and 19th century painter. There is no any kind of you know the the, the, the overlap, overlap you know aesthetic you know dimension there. So, um, so according to this kind of evidence, we can say that uh, changing of regime is produce what different. Aesthetic, even even you actually share the same you know idea. That means it's very important idea to realization idea different from according to the regime, depending on such a kind of you know difference of regime. So um, if we, we got to say that um, the for instance we got the utopian impulse, blah blah, you know everybody got the utopian impulse. For, for, think about you know the Graham Hancock, for instance, Graham Hancock argued that. We are all, you know, got, you know, all, you know, human civilization got pyramid. <laughs> all, you know, shared, same, you know, similar, actually, you know, the, the, the architecture. That's why just we got same origin, Atlantis, something like that. We got, you know, very long time ago, ancient age, we human beings got such a very, you know, uh, marvelous civilization. After that, that in Atlantis is sunk, sunk into the actual sea, ocean. After the, the remained actually the escape from such you know the disaster to the actual continent, they are building up similar architect. That is a little bit very interesting conspiracy theory anyway. But uh, it just you know um, not like that. What I said, according to this kind of you know development of aesthetics, we can see that the. Regime, we can share the same, you know, idea, but the regime is actually the, you know, um, the produce different, you know, aesthetic with the, this kind of same ideas. That is my point. So uh, that's why just uh, we can see that some kind of, you know, um, the cultural hybridity in every sort of, you know, uh, multicultural, any whatever we call that. Every culture might be a Hybrid, in terms of the hybrid means what is uh, the, this kind of mixed, mixed you know, the regime or the mixed experience into the um, a specific you know representation system. The regime might be called a representation system, you know, law and you know the parliament system, representative politics, blah blah, and the education system as well. All thing is called, might be called regime. According to such a regime, aesthetic will be changed. Or otherwise, at the reverse of the same, aesthetic could change regime. If you just imported you know, different aesthetic, for instance, in Korean context, then you know, the new self-portrait, impression of self-portrait, imported into Korean context as modern painting. There's a reason why the Korean has no, no, no actually the pyramid style you know, painting. You can't see any, any you know, in the museum. If you visit Korea, <laughs> try to find 
never there. Just this one is the first one. So Paul, Korean people need this kind of a setting. For what? This is the point we start our research. This is, I think, you know, we can you know, find out, shared interdisciplinary study for understanding culture or understanding you know, you know, the, the exchanging, exchanging these kind of values or the uh, production of the aesthetic form we can uh, share for our own uh, disciplinary studies in, from this point. This question, what I said, that is what Deleuze said, idea. For Deleuze, idea means question, abstractive machine. That is what, following up such an abstract machine, our life is assemblaged, producing such an assemblage. That means, uh, what, what kind of you know, idea you got, depending on what kind of idea you got, your life changed. This is what Deleuze said, and Rangsi as well agreed to that. So problem is knowledge or perception. And the regime is actually controlled and decided which you know, knowledge you should have. Otherwise, you can you know, change that one. If you got some, uh, I'm, I don't agree with this. This one is the first, you know, the starting point for Rangxie of the, the political. I don't agree with that. If you declare, declare that one. I don't agree with that. This, this agreement is producing, this is producing what? Rupture between the given value and the new value. So, um, images, I, uh, uh, this is my concreting mark, you know. I will say it like this. Image is the very place for controversy. Why? Always image talking about, image showing up what? Such a kind of an intermingling regime. Or some kind of, you know, uh, something, uh, tension between representation and non-representation, or unrepresented. That is image. Image showing up objective while at the same time hiding unrepresented. That's why image is always controversial. There's a, I point that by, uh, through the actual Rangsha theory and Deleuze theory, we can understand what, how actual theory works, giving us what thinking. That is, I think, very important. So image, that's why image is very important. Not only at your modern age, but also, you know, ancient and medieval age as well. Image is power. Image means power. What kind of power? Power by thinking. You know? So done. I'm, that's it. <laughs> Thank you.